Hey, what's going on everybody? Ben Delaney here. I'm at the Roubidoux Rendezvous where I'm testing out the Trek Checkpoint, a bike I know and love. But I put on the Aero Bars, the contentious Aero Bars, because it is windy AF here, kids. We're gonna see how the bike goes, see how I go, and see how the day goes. I raced the original Checkpoint at Unbound Gravel 200, and I raced this new version previously at Steamboat Gravel with the new Explorer version of SRAM's red ETAP Axis and its 1044 cassette. At nearly 18 pounds for a 46, it is in no danger of being the world's lightest gravel bike. In the positive column for the Checkpoint though, shown here inside the Robodo trading post from the mid 1800s, are its isospeed decoupler, which is Trek speak for a damped pivot at the seat mast top tube junction. What this means for you is a bit of comfortable flex without any pogoing or active suspension weight. Further, the bike has progressive geometry. It sits low with 76 millimeters of bottom bracket drop. Trek extended the top tube by two centimeters compared to the outgoing version, but the checkpoint still has a relatively quick 72 degree head tube, which makes for a 61 mil of trail. Now you can compare that to a slacker bike, like say a Salsa Warbird with less than 71 degrees at the head tube and 71 millimeters of trail, or a Giant Revolt, which is 71-71, or the Super Slacker BMC Unrestricted, which has a 70 degree head tube and 77 millimeters of trail. For context, the slackest gravel bike in all the land is the evil Shammy Hagar which is way back at 66.7 degrees in the head tube and 93 millimeters of trail. Anyway, back to the checkpoint. What all this means is a comfortable, confident gravel bike that handles well. Another positive thing in my book is the normal handlebar and stem. Now, integrated bars, stems look cool, but good luck if you want to change sizes or angles or put aero bars on there. Speaking of, for Robodo's windswept Nebraskan course, I added Pro's missile aero bars and SRAM's plug-in blip satellite shifters. With a low stack height on these bars, you lose the ability to use the full widths of the tops, but you've still got plenty of room at the hoods and just behind them. The benefit, of course, is that you're able to get your torso lower, your arms tucked in, and take advantage of the positive aerodynamics. So. What the heck and where the heck is the Rubidu Rendezvous? Well, let's start with the name. How do we pronounce your race, good sir? I say Rubidu. Uh, you can say Robido, Robidu, Rubido, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, if you talk to any family members of the Rubidu family, you'll find about 17 different spellings <laughs> or anything like that. Um, I say Rubidu, kind of rolls off the tongue. And the way I say it rhymes with Rendezvous now. So, Rubidu Rendezvous. There you go. That's it. Past winners include my buddy Betsy Welch and some guy named uh, Ashton Lambie, both of whom reported afterwards that wind was the determining factor out on the open plains. I set out on my 2022 trek alongside the typically diverse selection of machines you see at a gravel event, including my buddy Tony's Trek Single Track 950 from the early 1990s. Just a few minutes into the race, James Walsh took a flyer. He wouldn't be caught until well after mile 40, and even then he held on for second behind Luke Hall. Nice work, Luke and James. The first major climb of the day served as the Hogwarts sorting hat, and we found ourselves in small groups. James was up there chased by four guys, and I was in a group of eight behind. With the wind whipping, it became an all-day balancing act to try to find the sweet spots between the best drafts in the group and the smoothest, firmest part of the road. Often it was only one or the other. I nestled into the aero bars and stayed there for a good portion of the day. With our group comfortably riding in an echelon, I could sit in the aero bars and relax and shift with the blips there at the end of the bars. I only really needed to leave the position to break for corners or to eat or to drink. Okay, that's not entirely true. A freshly cut mile or two of single track was absolutely not an aero bar situation. What had been a group of eight was six by the time we hit the single track and then was reduced to four when we emerged. Our quartet quickly filled bottles, our one stop of the day in the 100 mile race, and then we were back on the gas. After a few reshufflings due to tired or cramping legs, soon it was three guys up the road and four of us chasing. 
Over the top of the steep Robodo Pass, I was still on the arrow bars, pulling back hard on the extensions and fighting to keep the 44 of 44 gear turning over. I misjudged and botched the finish, and I ended up an annoying fourth out of four in our group. But I was happy with the day and delighted with the addition of the arrow bars and blip satellite shifters. And I was stoked to have experienced the Robodo Rendezvous with new and old friends. Boy, I was glad to have the arrow bars on there. I spent probably 60% of the time tucked, not just on the front, but in the group because it was just screaming at least 20 plus mile an hour winds all day long. Bike held up great, no flats, no whammies. Having a little bit of give with the uh, <clears throat> the seat post seat mast was welcome. Highly recommend doing this event. In addition to the you know the wide open gravel rolling roads that I was expecting, there was also a bit of a freshly cut single track. Trek checkpoint gets gets a check, gets two thumbs up for me. Uh, being able to plug in the SRAM ETAP uh, buttons was super slick. They make wireless ones now. SRAM sent me some two of the wireless pieces. I'm a moron. I lost the thing, so I've got these old wire, wired ones that just plug in. So that was nice to be able to shift from the extension. So. All in all, good times in Nebraska.